because everyone just does the same thing. And when you're a new grad, you don't know shit. Like you don't know how to be a dietitian yet, let alone how to run a business. So focus on being a dietitian, do that, learn from someone else. And then if you really want to do it, go for it. Old friends want to get they talk on Making excuses for why I made it Cause they hate to see me spot on I just narrowed down my targets right until I'm locked on I've never needed What time's our last interview? Uh, 10.30, so finish at 12 Yeah, we got two, um, Dal, which is I'll try for my life. Is that what No, it's calling my mother. I don't know what is going to do. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's a different. Yeah. Yo, hello. Someone can't spell dietitian and they've been working with us for 12 months. That's what bloody pisses me off. But I might be doing another presentation for SDA in the Gold Coast next week. Fingers crossed. So I meant to do it on the 12th, um, but I'm in Melbourne. So I offered to do it the next week if they would like someone to do it. So I drive down. Um, but it's at 3.20, which would suck. So now I'm okay if they don't say okay. <laughs> because driving back from the Gold Coast at 3.20 p.m. to Sunshine Coast would be absolute nightmare. Wouldn't get back to like seven. Yes. Fuck that. Fuck that. Okay, and I'll find out on the 18th of March whether it'll be an advanced APD. Advanced, representing SDA, and they've got a PowerPoint. And basically, usually I'm pretty good with talks, but this one is slightly more difficult because I have to touch on different points. So SDA background, but like no one's really interested in that. So I'm probably gonna skip over that. Um, and I'll talk about how to become a sports dietitian, um, career pathways. And then there wasn't a lot of information in there. And I know that students are gonna ask a couple of things, especially around money. So I identified how many, how much different courses are. Um, so I can tell them when they ask and then also, there's only 167 accredited sports dietitians in Australia. 167. So there was more. And we've got four of them. So, versus 6,500 dietitians. Quick maths. Oh, I mean, back at uni for fucking. Wow. Since you were at uni. Oh, no, I've been there since then, but I was there for USC. Awards. It's a finalist. Oh, Didn't are. win. It's a bit annoying. So pretty much it's the nutrition dietetic students um, at USC, so University of Sunshine Coast. So there could be first year, second year, third year, fourth year. So I'll, just, I'll just go in here since this person's coming out. Hopefully this is where I used to jag parks all the time back in the day. Oh, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are you leaving? No. Nah. All good. Yeah, oh. sweet. <laughs> God damn. This is way too far. It's parked up there. Freaking hell. This one. <sighs> All right. Well, we're getting our steps up today, Abby. That sun is actually scorching. Yeah, because it's paid parking. Uh, so... Oh, do I have to pay? Yeah. Do you know your registration? No. Oh, shit. Warren. Wait. Okay. Good. Good. Cool. Sweet. Thank you. Hello. Uh, 
for those that don't know me, uh, Tyson Tripconi is my name. I run Fuel Your Life, which is the largest private practice dietitian company in Australia. I also run Dietitian Life, which was basically built to support students, new grads, to be better in a free environment. Uh, little plug. Um, so my history, I actually didn't know that I wanted to be a dietitian whatsoever. Um, I did a business science degree here at USC. Um, and there was a sports nutrition subject and I asked Fiona, I came to her office and asked if I could get in because I hadn't done the electives to get into it. Um, she approved it, I did it and then realised I wanted to be a sports dietitian. Um, from there we had a conversation uh, and I ended up doing my Masters at Griffith on the Gold Coast, uh, committed to it uh, and then worked in private practice, um, for mo like did community first, then worked in a hospital, aged care, corporate, built my own private practice and now pretty much just running the business and seeing only a couple of clients um, because I enjoy more building up dietitians than what I do clients now. Um, so yeah, that's my story. SDA is who I'm here representing. Uh, so pretty much they asked me to give this little presentation. I don't know if any of you guys have done a presentation that other people have developed, but it is a nightmare. So instead, I'll probably just talk through my experiences um, with SDA. So SDA was actually founded in 1996 um, there was only a small group of them then, um, and it's built up to what it is now. I think there's only 167 accredited sports dietitians in Australia. That's the current quota on the website. I think there's 6,500 dietitians, but 167 accredited sports dietitians. Um, when I was a student, even before I did dietetics, I applied for this membership with SDA because I was so interested in sport. Who here is interested in being a sports dietitian? So that is less than I thought. All right, so about five people. All right, you're, you're gonna have a great time because usually like on the Gold Coast, it's just like everyone will put their hand up. I thought Sunny Coast would be a bit heavy, but sweet. So pretty much with Sports Dietetics as a member, Sports Dietitians Australia as a member, the, one of the best things is having access to the entire network. So you can find every single person on that website and hit them up for work experience. And that's something that I did when, even before I did my masters, I hit up every single sports dietitian in my local area from Sunshine Coast to Gold Coast and asked if I could do anything for them. Most of them didn't reply, some did, and then I'd drive like two hours down to Goldie, do a 15 minute data collection with skin folds and then drive back. But what it did was create my name in the community and what Bridget and Tess were talking about is getting your name out there is kind of half the effort. I never got a job with any of them post, but what they did was introduce me to other people and also get my rep up that I actually am willing to do whatever it takes to succeed. And that's something as an employer now that actually matters a lot. We get so many applicants that haven't done any work experience and the common excuse is too busy with uni, too stressed, can't do it. But the reason you're doing uni is to become a dietitian, is to get work. So if your employer is looking for people who've done work experience, they're more likely to go for someone and interview someone that's done work experience than someone that hasn't. Because even if it is just data collection, I literally, I remember going to Greg Cox, is a well, very well-known sports dietitian in our space, and I drove to the QAS um, in South Briz, and all I did was fill little um, like plastic sleeves of supplement powder for like three hours, because they needed that for travelling with the athletes. So just doing that, he wasn't even with me half the time. He'd just go and see clients or do whatever, and I was just in a room with supplement powder, just putting it in, weighing it out, putting it in. Um, but what it did, it didn't, I didn't learn a lot, but what it did is showed that commitment. Um, and also, if you bring value to someone else, then they're more likely to put you up for other stuff. In terms of being a sports dietitian, the pathway is pretty much you graduate, you do at least a year of clinical, and then you apply to get into the sports nutrition course. It's a four-day sports nutrition course. It used to be run at the AIS. Um, now with the AIS changing their structure, um, it's now run at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. I believe. Um, so you do a four-day course and then after that you can call yourself a provisional sports dietitian. From there you then you a year of experience in sport doing the CDP points like continuing, pre uh, continuing professional development points um, and then you can become an accredited sports dietitian after that. So pretty much graduate within three years is probably the soonest you'll get it. Having said that, if you do a lot of that work experience prior, you can get someone to write your reference and you can actually jump the queue and get in. It's probably something that SDA probably doesn't want me to tell you, but um, that's something that I did. I did like two years worth of experience doing all that shit work. Um, 
and then as a result, Greg Cox wrote me a reference letter, said, hey, I reckon he's someone that we need in our profession, and I got in. So if you're someone that's interested in sport, for the five people that put their hands up and for those that were too scared to put their hand up, um, that's definitely the pathway I would take to get you there the quickest. Um, other than that, DAA have just recently released with SDA a sports nutrition essentials course. So what that is is an eight-week online course. I think it's like $399 for students. Um, basically, that's for people who just want to get their feet wet in sports nutrition but don't really want to be a sports dietitian. The sports dietitian's course, I think, is like $1,700. It's obviously a big investment, but $400 might be more up your alley, especially if you don't actually plan in or want to work in elite sport or um, as a sports dietitian. If you just want to be a dietitian, work in private practice and see some sports clients, that could be a good way of doing it. If you want any more information on that, it's on the DA website, not the SDA website. Cool. Um, what else? So pretty much what SDA do. So they also have monthly meetings. So every month, every chapter, so the Queensland ones in Brisbane, you can sometimes phone in via Skype, but pretty much sports dietitians in Queensland will go to a meeting together in a space and they'll have different presenters present about different topics. SDA have a pretty good rep amongst their members, so we're all willing to do stuff for free, like this, because we really believe in SDA and what they do for us. Um, that's something that I haven't felt from other organisations, but SDA have just been super supportive the whole time and we're all willing to give up our time for free for them. Um, and those meetings can be really good in networking. We talk about Tess and Bridget again, um, just networking with all of those people is really valuable, especially if you want to work in sport. Um, and even if you don't, most of them own private practices that then you can get in there or they know people that work in a hospital. Dietetics is pretty small, like very small. We all know each other, we all talk, we all kind of rep other students that maybe work for us. We're like, it's not for us, but I reckon they'll suit your organization and vice versa. So it's a good way to you to get in and get a job by just making connections. And I hate networking. I'm the, I'm the dude who would sit at the back. I wouldn't talk to anyone. And most people don't want to come and talk to me. So like, that, that wasn't really my environment, but just doing work for free was my thing. I was willing to do whatever it takes, and I did it that way and networked that way. So whoever you are, whether you're the shy person at the back who doesn't want to talk to people, or you are the person that just like bouncing around and will happily talk to everyone, which some dietitians are one or the other, um, then you'll figure out the way to do it. But I think doing the networking, whatever way you do it, is 100% the best way in sport to do it. In terms of becoming a sports dietitian, other than that, so we've got the work experience angle there where you can get in early, but what you do when you become a member is those having access to those members, having access to those uh, meetings, but then they also send out a monthly CDP uh, kind of email, which basically gives you the top research articles of that last month. So then you don't have to troll the interwebs around what different stuff is, they can just show you the top stuff that's just been released. So that's people with all the name drops that Fiona was just doing. They're like powerhouses. Like anything with Burke or Chicken Drop, I can't even say his name properly, um, are like the best things you'll ever read. If you if you like a bit of a science nerd in sport, they are the best people ever. If you see their name, read that. Um, but <laughs> pretty much they send you out that so you don't have to do all the work. I know everyone's time poor. You don't have to do the work. They send it to you. Uh, also, they've got a fuel mag, which basically dietitians from within the industry will often contribute different articles. So I've written an article about when I travelled with the Australian lacrosse team um, over to Japan. Um, other people write articles when Olympic year or um, world champs and that kind of thing, telling about their experiences, what they found, top tips. So anyone that's actually interested in sport, it's 100% a great thing. They've also released the refuel mag, which is now to clients. Um, that's kind of more general public stuff. But you have the opportunity as a student to actually contribute to some of those things, whether it be as an editor, or if you uh, like DAA and Dietitian Connection, they also invite you to come to a conference, and if you're just like helping with, with registrations and you can get the conference for free, definitely a way to do it. I've done that, it's worth it. Um, SDA do a conference every two years in Melbourne. Um, so the ones this year in October, um, highly recommend. It is the best thing that I ever go to. This year is on hydration, um, so if you're interested in hydration, that's what it is. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure that is what we do. We also uh, run workshops, so master classes for those that become accredited. You can't get into it as a student, but if you become accredited, there's these additional workshops that cover specific topics. So I think there's going to be a workshop down in the conference this year around actual hydration for um, the upcoming Olympics. Uh, so just around how to adequately do that. 
Um, I'm, I'm running a workshop on business and private practice and sport. Um, but then every year there's different workshops that get run. I know Gary Slater's run quite a few as well around physique, um, muscle mass building, that kind of stuff. But yeah, anything that you want in regards to sport, I couldn't speak highly enough about SDA. It's $65, it's nothing. Don't go out one weekend and then pay for the membership and you're sweet. So um, I, I highly recommend it. Any questions about sport or anything? I'm a bit different to the other crew. I have worked as a dietitian. I don't mind talking people one-on-one -on -one and telling them what to eat, but then I also enjoy more now helping dietitians. So has anyone got any things they want to ask? I did a business degree, uh, but I don't think it actually helped. Um, I'll be honest, like, I felt like business, the degree was quite common sense. It was just basically look after your people, spend money for the long term rather than the short term. If you don't focus on the dollar, you usually become more successful. Um, so no, but if you're a new grad that wants to start in private practice straight up, don't start working for yourself straight up. Work for someone else, learn from them. Like I had a business degree and I still work for like nine different people before I even started my business. So what you can do in that is not only get experience of a dietitian, but also experience how to actually run a business successfully or know how not to run a business. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. And there's not that many full-time sports dietitians in Australia like that only see sport. Most of them have to be good at everything and they just try and target sport. So before I was transitioning out, I had the ability to hire other people that could see the other clients and only saw sport, but it's not a common thing. Um, a lot of people that uh, manage teams as a sports dietitian often have like three, four, five teams. They're not making 100K each team, and most of them are doing 100 hours a week and doing a lot for free um, just because they love it. And that's the thing with sports dietetics is that teams know and a lot of people hit them up to work with a team or endurance or whatever. So they can kind of, you can get undercut in no time. So you either have to build your rep. So there's no amount of undercutting that could stop someone from taking you or yeah, you work for nothing. <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, and, and you often get other roles that you didn't actually intend. So when I travelled with the Australian lacrosse team when we went to Japan, I didn't have to pay for my flights, I didn't get paid. But um, what I ended up doing was sourcing all the food for every single meal for the entire thing. So every morning I would get up early, go get breakfast for 30 dudes that eat a lot in a country that they don't speak English and then have to... <laughs> And then go, oh, it was great. Um, and like, I, that was when like Google Translator wasn't really working so well, so it didn't really work. But um, like, and then what else did I do? I, there was like trying to get um, restaurants. So organize a restaurant, book in advance, because teams are very time poor. So you need to make it just back there, get it done. Then they've got a meeting, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to go there, order in advance, try and get enough food. They didn't understand that it actually meant two of everything. And they're like, oh no, you don't need that much food for 30 people. And then we did. We actually ate, we ate out an all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue joint. So ate out like legit. We we all of meat. They ended up going next door, getting frozen chicken nuggets and frozen chips. No word of a lie to then get us to eat that, and then they kicked us out. Because there's 30 30 big big guys. They eat. So the amount of rice and meat and stuff. They started with fresh meat, then it went frozen, then it went chicken nuggets. Do you have a question? Are you Oh, I would love to work with esports. Um, I don't think it's there yet. I think 
some of the high-end teams in Europe and stuff might be thinking about nutrition, but in Australia, there's not really that heavy of a... Esports is like gaming, for those that don't know. Um, so I don't think so. I definitely think there's a possibility, especially the growth that it's happening right now. But then it becomes these dudes just stay up all the time. So it'll be more around caffeine. Yeah. But at the same time, their lifestyle as an athlete, pretty much till they're 25, then your yeah. your you, um, reaction starts slowing down. Yeah. Um, so then it's all a young man's game. So yeah. a lot of them don't really care. It's just like up. But it's education, and I, we're still educating, buddy. Or well, NRL have finally now said that you need to have a sports dietitian on your team. So every NRL code has to. But like that's NRL. Wow. Esports is like yeah. the last five years. So <laughs> it's going to be a long, long game. But I, I think, yeah, hundred percent. And I think the noisier we get, and I think it'll come down to people doing it for free, yeah. working with a team that wins, and then everyone's like, oh, I need to get one of them because they made them win. They want to win, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Another question. Yep. Dietitian life. whole process like I, I can recommend people not to start their private practice straight up people are still going to do it yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess it's the, the content that we put out if those that haven't seen it is just around myself and the national manager Peter just talking about our weeks and then also answering questions from students new grads and stuff around how to be a better dietitian how to get through uni what to expect on placement that kind of stuff um, in terms of what we're targeting at it's just just everyone it's the whole profession and we feel like it was something that was missing that there wasn't a lot of straight honest talk and obviously that's who I am so that became natural and I know it's just a different different voice and given that private practice is kind of my thing and a lot of the jobs as Tess was talking about is dried up a lot in clinical in a hospital setting especially if you're going to go city um, then a lot of people are going to get into private practice. So I feel like it's everyone's going to go out and they feel isolated, not supported. And we see it so often with the people that graduate that still work at Coffee Club a year later. It's just like, what can we do to help them get a job? Um, so we offer a lot of work experience for a lot. I think we've got like 25 people doing volunteer work experience for us at the moment um, across all the businesses. So it's just one of those things where we just want to do what we can because actually passionate about the profession and it's succeeding. And it just sucks that there isn't that much buy-in from a lot of the public. Um, so it's just being, um, I, what do you say, creative, Tess, in how you actually approach it. Um, because everyone just does the same thing. And when you're a new grad, you don't know shit. Like, you don't know how to be a dietitian yet, let alone how to run a business. So focus on being a dietitian. Do that. Learn from someone else. And then if you really want to do it, go for it. Cool? Sweet. Thanks, guys. Okay. So, on a hole. Hmm. How'd it went? Yeah. How'd it go? How'd it go? Uh, I think it could have been better. I, because I didn't create the presentation. It's freaking hard to present, but. No, I didn't have PowerPoint, so whatever. But that's what I struggle with the most. Is, but I think I got across the point that you should definitely join SDA if you're interested in sports nutrition whatsoever. If you want to network, um, and it's cheap. So definitely the best thing I ever did in terms of membership is doing that. Because then I had access to everyone. And I've always been someone that hates, it's about like who you know, not what you know. I've hated that because I never knew anyone. Never knew a single soul. And like I said in the thing, I don't fucking like networking, I hate it. So, <laughs> instead it's just me hitting them up and going, oh, I'll work for you for free. If anyone rejects working, someone working for free, you're pretty stupid. <laughs> so that was my way in, my way of knowing people, but 
less about that and more about how I built out the resume and then what I got as a result. Like I said in the talk, I didn't get any jobs with any of them. Still never had any jobs with them. Um, but I added to my resume and I got other jobs as a result. And I got rep because jobs in private practice work for people. We've got eight out right now. I'm gonna hire another 50 in the next two years. So if you're watching this right now, there's gonna be jobs. So if you do work experience for us, we're gonna know your name. And if you do good work, we'll probably give you an interview. And if you get an interview, you're more likely to get hired if you've done work for us. And if we like you. That was like weird because my arms are like too long. <laughs> yeah. Just like I had to like 